Okay, so I've had a word on my heart for a while, <clears throat> and it's too long to type out. I've already been told I'd type too much on Facebook, so this would end up being another five-paragraph essay that nobody wants to read. So I thought I'd do a video. I've seen some other people doing it, and I've always thought I'm a weak speaker. I've even preached 20 years ago as a part-time preacher, and I pretty much failed, but thank God is saying I need to, he didn't forget about that and neither should I. So I'm going to try this. Um, so I'll just ask for your grace and um, if it doesn't go very well, if um, I lose my train of thought because my mind moves at a thousand thoughts a second and I lose my train of thought pretty often. Um, got my notepad to try to keep that in line. So we'll see how it goes. If I fail, I fail. But really what I wanted to talk about was um, a word on my heart about, you know, the, the need for prayer ministry. And, and, and Pastor Bill, I, I tagged you in this video because I, I, you preached such a powerful message about gifts of the Holy Spirit and the need to use them for God's glory and the, and the body of Christ. And so I wanted to let you know that your powerful messages are not just being preached to the wind. You know, I know I'm listening and I know I'm not the only one. There's probably quite a few people listening. And um forgive me, I gotta look down here a minute. So gosh, sorry. But yeah, it um I wanted to talk about prayer, you know, and it's it's at different levels have has always been on my heart and even identified as probably my gifting of the Holy Spirit, although recently I fell a little flat and I got some more work to do. Um, even trying to pray for this lesson, I ended up preaching my message right back to God. And I'm like, God, I'm trying to pray to you and I'm preaching to you. So um, still got some work to do. But, um, you know, I can remember years ago, and, and I'm not trying to put nobody down. Don't get me wrong at all. But, um, sorry. I was in a small group and it was the, the time for prayer and it wasn't a one-time thing. This is pretty much how it went every time. It was, you know, one person is praying that their dog will have a good visit to the doggy dentist. Another person who's here staying at their vacation home is praying they'll have a good visit to their second vacation home. And it's a lot of things like that. And I'm, and, and I don't speak up. I don't speak up a lot. And I didn't speak up then. And I'm not trying to put them down now. I mean, there's a time and place for that. But I couldn't help but think, like, that's it? The power of God, and we're praying for your dog to have a good dental visit. I mean, no disrespect to your dog, but I don't care about your dog. I care about the people of God. I mean, there, there's missionaries literally dying for the gospel, and we're praying about your dog. Or... There, there's people in the small group who had their electricity turned off, and we're praying about your your a good vacation to your second vacation home. I mean, that's not criticizing that you have that. I'm happy for you, and I celebrate that with you. But And on your own, by all means, pray for that. But when we're coming together to pray for the people of God, can we do something a little more? And that was, I don't even know how long ago, decades ago. And... um. Yeah, it still bothers me. It was decades ago, and it still bothers me. But I'm just, where's the faith? Where's the faith in that? Well, how much faith did it take to pray for that? You know? And then I want to fast forward a few years, and, and I've shared this story before with a few people. And for the sake of time, I don't, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but, you know, I was in a part of another church that no fault of their own. It's... Every church has strengths and weaknesses, but they did not have a prayer ministry, a formal one anyway. And But there were spirit-filled believers who went to that church and just doing stuff the best they could on their own. I mean, I was one of them, and, and I remember talking to a lady. She, she, she had church business and was meant to talk to me for 15 seconds, and she actually talked to me for 15 minutes and was just... She tell, she's telling me she's so relieved 
to talk to somebody who also understands the, the, the spirit of God and the things of God and the power of God in our lives. And I was like, that's our shame. It's like, that should be, and every five minutes at church, somebody should be having that conversation with each other. It doesn't even matter with who, you know, she, she's a Hispanic woman that speaks Spanish and she didn't care that I'm just some white guy that doesn't speak Spanish. Spirit of God between us, that's what mattered. And, and we were great friends. And every time she saw me, hey, brother, that's all, that's all she ever referred me to. Hey, brother. And, and I really appreciate a lot of people from that church, in fact. But I don't want to get into that. But she's outside on her own. And a, a new person to the church walks up. And she's not worried about good dental visits and vacations homes. She says she's got a young girl in a, in a wheelchair and she's been in it her whole life and she's never been to church before and I want you to pray for my daughter to be healed. Now, if all you're used to praying for is this other stuff and somebody walks up to you, you you're not ready. I mean, you're not ready to pray for these things. The, the, the faith, I'm sorry, but the faith just isn't there. It, you know, and, and someday it might be your turn. You're not on the prayer ministry, but you're a servant of God. He might send somebody to you, a co-worker, and says, Hey, I, I heard you went to church. I need you to pray for me. And, and are you are you ready for that? I mean, I had to look long and hard at myself and say, Am I ready for that? And, but this lady, she was, she's absolutely ready. There, there's no prayer too small or too big for her. The lady, she walked up and, and she said, I will absolutely pray for your daughter. She put her hand on her shoulder and said, get out of this wheelchair in Jesus' name. And everybody moved on. Well, two days later, that girl did get out of her wheelchair and she walked. And that's really a double miracle because she's never walked before in her life. Been in a wheelchair her whole life and she gets up and walks. Knows how to walk with never walking. So... We didn't even ask for that. God took care of it. It was a detail we didn't need to know. God, God took care of it. And, and some people, oh, she was faking. She was faking a wheelchair for 15 years. I mean, if you can do that and pull that off, um, you know, more power to you. But no, she, she was not faking. And, and the reaction of the mother when her daughter got up says it all. And... You know, she, and she, she had to do this herself, no support. And I, I mean, I didn't know she was doing it. Otherwise, I'd have been out there too. I just heard about it after the fact. But, but I, it just, God was putting on my heart that I need to go see the, the lead pastor and we got to talk about a prayer ministry for that church. And I went to his staff and I mean, it's a large, large church and, and he's a busy dude. I mean, I'm not taking that away from him. And they said, well, we have one of these other pastors that would be more than happy to talk to you. I, I'm sorry, but God said talk to this guy, so I will wait as long as it takes, but that's who I'm talking to. And they were kind of shocked, but they knew I wasn't budging, so they said, well, I'll see what I can do. And they got they did get me on his schedule two months from that day. I said, that's fine, I will wait. You know, I will wait upon the Lord. And But I wrote out my whole plan to go in there and talk to him like, uh, scripture i talked about this incident and others and 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 this kid that really blew it wide open for me he's he's 18 years old he walks in and he just he just got back from a mission trip to the philippines and he said you know i saw some stuff over there why why isn't it here i, I saw people getting prayed for and healed right there on the street I saw people being delivered from a lifetime, 40, 50 years of drugs and alcohol, and they're instantly clean. They're domestic, I mean, anger, whatever it was, instantly, right there on the spot, healed on the street, because somebody put their arm out, put it on their shoulder, and said, in the name of Jesus, be healed, whatever it was. And he said, why do, don't we see that here? And I, I had no answer for him. It's like, I, I don't know, dude, I, I feel you. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to talk to the pastor in two months. I'll bring that up. 
but I, I don't have an answer for you. We're just afraid of it. We're afraid of what it's going to look like. It, it might look weird. And I got bad news for you. Being a Christian means you're going to look weird. You know, I'm, I'm sure it was weird when they dan- uh, marched around Jericho for seven days, looking like fools. I mean, the guys on the t- the guards on the tower probably thought I thought they were here to invade. They're playing their instruments. We're good. And seven days later, they're not so good. You know, it's the same thing. It's like. The Bible is full of weird, and if you want to see the power of God, get used to weird. Or, and another fear might be you just, that's not for me. And maybe not full time, maybe that's not your gifting. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. It doesn't matter. Anybody at any time could walk up to you, I heard you were a Christian, I desperately need help, can you pray for me? I mean, I sit out on the park bench at my work nearly every day on my third break one day God said give me your third break so I go out there and I sit there and I pray for my building nobody comes out there asking for anything but I'm ready if they do I mean every day I say God if you send somebody here whoever they are whatever it is I just pray in here you'll make me ready you'll have the words you'll have what I need just just ask God. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm sufficient on my own either. And you just, you just got to be ready for that thing. And this is what I'm trying to bring up to the pastor. And, and I thought I was going to have to go there to convince him of the prayer ministry. But what ended up happening, he just smiles real big when I was done. And he said, you know, we as a staff have been talking about this for a year. And you walking in here with all this stuff is confirmation to me personally and all our staff because the the missions guy was sitting right there that this is god god is doing something he wants to do more and this is confirmation we need to do we need to move in this direction and i told him i said whatever it ends up looking like pastor i'm with you whatever you decide i'm with you and then three weeks later we moved to the east valley and i don't or yeah, East Valley, and whatever they decided, I didn't get to be a part of. But I, I've talked to a couple people since then, and they do have a prayer ministry. And I don't know what it looks like, but they, I talked to the leader of it, and he asked me to come back. And I was like, nope, I, I, this is where God put me. And now my, my promise to you now applies to my new pastor. Whatever you decide, I'm with you. I'm in. You know, we'll grow it together or whatever it ends up looking like. Okay, I got off track a little bit. Um, oh, where am I? And, and yeah, and, and around church, it just got to be no. I mean, I was seeking, praying about it, seeking, and, and around church, people just started showing up. Another lady said, I was a prayer counselor at a, at a rehab facility, and... I heard you were the guy to talk to about a prayer ministry. I was like, I am? This is news to me, but hey, you know, let's let's talk about it. And then that kid, of course, and then a bunch of other people, and I gave Pastor their 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 names too, and said, These people are ready, willing, and able to go right now. And I'm best I'm betting in your church, wherever you're at, whatever church you go to, a certain percentage of your congregation is ready, willing, and able, no matter what it ends up looking like. you got, you got to start somewhere. If it's just something small, start small. See what God can do with that. I mean, when, when God told me to write, I thought I was writing for just something small. And he said, let me have it and see what, I, see what I'll do with it. And I've published three books. You know, I'm working on number four. But I've kind of hit a wall with that one too, and I think maybe God, that one was not God ordained, and I'm thinking maybe He wanted me to move on and grow a little bit from from writing, as what Pastor said, um, take a risk. If my video sucks and people laugh at me, then you know I, I didn't do it to get approval; I did it to obey God, and you know that's where something good is going to happen. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, you know, and in and, and what he saw, and I, I think about 
these guys were given a testimony, and they weren't associated with her, I don't believe, but they were given a testimony about Heidi Baker. Um, she gets a lot of criticism, and you know what? She doesn't care. She's serving God. She sees the power of God move. Your criticism means absolutely nothing to her. You know, when you see God that powerful in your life, I mean, good luck with your criticism. That's all I can say. But the, these two guys, they were new to, I think it was India, and there was a witch doctor just casting all these curses on them. And they even, they were feeling it. They were feeling the evil. It, it was real. The, this, this guy wasn't a phony. He was a real witch doctor with demonic power, and he was just sending it over to them. And, and it was affecting them. And they, were, they weren't sure what to do. And just out of the crowd, Heidi Baker walks up to them and just <laughs> kind of gives them a little motherly rebuke in their words. She just says, what are you guys doing? And she says, wait back here. And she just walks right up to this witch doctor, puts, puts her hand on him, and he had leprosy. She puts her hand on him and just says, are you tired? And just this gentle motherly voice, are you tired? And, and the guy just breaks down. He's like, yes. She says, do you need Jesus? And he's just like, yes. And she prayed for him right there on the street. Deliverance of demonic power, deliverance from healed from leprosy. And then the guy says, but what about my girlfriend? She has leprosy. And not missing a beat, Heidi, Heidi says, bring him on over. Bring her on over. And so he goes and gets his girlfriend. They wait. Brings his girlfriend over, just arms white as snow. Heidi Baker puts her hand on her. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Leprosy, 100% gone right there on the street. Why don't we see that here? You know, the, again, I'm not criticizing. People got to do what they got to do. But, I mean, this, this whole pandemic has really exposed a lot in the church. Just no faith in response to it at all. I'm not saying we go cough in each other's faces, but we shouldn't be hiding under our beds either. The world is hiding under their bed. You know, we don't want to be like the world. We want to be like Jesus. You know, when Jesus put his hand on a leper, he wasn't wearing a mask, he wasn't wearing gloves. When the disciples put their hands on the sick and the injured, there was no PPE. It was the power of God, or it's all fake and we get sick. That was it. And... And, and I can confess, I don't think I'm there yet either. I got, I got work to do too, and, and I'm praying about that. Like, Lord, what do you need me to do? I, I may not understand. I may not get it. But say the word, and I'll go do it. And, and we'll see what happens. So, sorry, I lost my, that, that was not planned, and I lost my spot again. Um, so I just want to encourage your church, where, wherever church you are, wherever which one you go to, for, for your church's prayer ministry, you got to have it. Preach, preach the gospel all day long. If the Holy Spirit's not involved, it's going nowhere. I'm sorry. If the Holy Spirit's not working in these people's hearts, if they weren't even prayed for in prep before you even got there to preach the gospel, that their heart would have the right soil, to receive the word of God, you could preach up a storm, you preach up a hurricane. It don't matter. It's not going to do anything. You might see one or two people who are who are prayed for by someone else outside of your ministry, but you're not going to see the ministry that that you dreamed of if there's no prayer. The Holy Spirit's not involved. You're not going to see it. it might, you might see a fake one for a while. You might get away with human effort. And I don't want to call any ministry fake. I don't want to judge their hearts and their motivation. I know they're trying with everything they got. They're just missing something, missing the Holy Spirit. You got to have him. If he's not a part of it through prayer, it's not going to go anywhere. And I remember, and I, and again, this I'm not preaching this from a high horse. I remember just a little bit ago, I've been praying for something for a year. I mean, I felt like God spoke it. I'm going to pray for it. I got a timetable on it. Prayed for it for a year. The, the day's up. And as people like to say, nothing happened. And that's kind of gotten me down the last four or five months. Every time I think about it, I always go back to the, well, nothing happened. Am, am I doing this right? Am I even in the right place? Am I the fraud? 
And, you know, being the loving, spirit-filled wife that she is, Aaron, Aaron, <laughs> she wasn't hearing it. She just stopped me dead in my tracks. I was like, don't you even dare say that. Don't even dare. I don't want to hear it. Don't say it. It's like, okay, <laughs> shut that down real quick. But, uh, you know, and that's why we need each other. For somebody in your life to come and say, don't even dare speak like that. And God himself actually rebuked me on something else too. I was thinking about the same, the same thing and some other things. And I was like, you know, I, I've been praying for people a long time. I have, where's it at? My whole back page is prayer, salvations, healings, whatever, whatever, relationships, whatever it is. And I pray for these people and situations every, every Friday that I call Friday my salvation day. I'm praying for salvation for about 30 or 40 different people and healing for about, I don't know, 10 or 11 different people. But, um, and I'm just not seeing it. It's been going on for a year. And so I was thinking like, I'm one of those people that prays till their little heart out and nothing happens. And, and I remember God saying, and it was a pretty severe rebuke. It was like, don't you ever think nothing happened. Don't you, again, don't you dare think that just because you don't see it doesn't mean I'm not doing anything. I mean, God, and then you think of a story like Heidi Baker. Yeah, they get healed right on the street. The next guy might pray for him and, you know, nothing happened. And a year from then they get healed or a year, two years from there or it, whatever God was doing. Uh, is just the timing. The faith is our responsibility. The timing is God's. The, the faith is our responsibility and the action and the timing is God's. If we try to take over on any either one of those, we try to take over the, our own power, our own timing. Don't take my word for it. Read scripture about everybody in scripture who tried to do that and see how it turned out for them. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll save you from looking. It, it didn't work. It did not work out very well for them at all. They meant well. It was on their heart. They gave all their heart to it. They believed. But they left God out of it. They did not rely on him. They did not have faith for it. And disaster. And, and the biggest one I can think of is, again, back to Joshua. You know, Jericho went so well, but they disobeyed God. And so, but it went so well, you know, they had their, their round table meeting of all the generals. And they just decide amongst themselves, ah, oh, this is a little enemy. We, we don't, you know, we're a mighty army. We just had this great victory. We don't need the whole army. We'll just take eh, a couple thousand. We'll be good. You know, and they were missing a general at that table. Nobody brought it up to God. If they had, God probably would have stopped them in their tracks and told them that they have sin in the camp. And if they go, they'll be wiped out. But nobody bothered to mention it. No prayer, no prep, no God, what do you think? We submit our plans to you. And they went and they were wiped out. And then they all run back to camp and say, oh God, what happened? And then they got the news. This is what happened. So I mean, don't do that. Don't be that person. You know, I'm not saying you need to have a 30 minute prayer meeting to, to go decide what to have lunch. But if you're making major life altering decisions or even minor decisions, include God in it. You know, I got, I got so caught up in it and I went the other way. I mean, I couldn't open my closet without praying, What God, what shirt should I wear today? That, that's not what God's saying. I mean, I, I was a fool. That, that's not what God's saying at, at all. I was trying to find that balance. But, you know, don't be afraid to bring stuff up to God. You know, even privately or just in your mind. That's what a prayer ministry is for. You know, it breaks my heart when, you know, we get... we. And this is churches everywhere. Not, I'm not pinpointing one individual church, but they, they have an altar call and they say, we got people who are going to believe with you, pray with you, do whatever with you. Just take us one step of faith and walk forward. I remember my church in Rock of Ages, I'd never done that before. 
and and I did it. And after that, I, I didn't care what they were all. They, it could have been offering prayer for serial killers. I was up there. I was like, I need this prayer. I'll get up there and I'll be like, sorry, I'm not a serial killer, but can you pray for this? Absolutely. Bam, prayer. And, and I know I'm a changed person because of all the time I spent up at the altar area of uh, Rock of Ages Church in Missouri. And um, thank you. You know, I've said it a hundred times before, but I can never say it enough. Thank you to Pastor Tim and Tracy and, and Mark. And he's no longer with us, but Tim Williams too. It's just all those people up there in, investing prayer into their people. And, you know, in my, in my if you've ever read my book on the front cover, I said, this is because of Pastor Tim O'Brien. This is the fruit of everything you did. Your investment in me, this is the fruit. And I, and I can boldly say everything from that time forward, and, and I know more people have come along since then and have, you know, and, and now, too, that are investing and praying, and, and they're pushing that along. But you started it. You got it started. Be the person that got it started for somebody. They don't even have to know. Half the people I pray for don't even know. You know, that, that old saying, I'm alive today because Grandma... Um, Prayed for me, and and I know that's true. That's true for me too, but and it's meant as a joke, but it's true. You know, I posted a few days ago, like you would be in ruin if it weren't for the Christians in your life praying for you. And believe it or not, it doesn't make it any less true. You know, the power the power of God is blessing your life because there is somebody in your life who has the power of God flowing through them onto you. And the hope is someday you'll recognize that. But even, even if you don't, there's people that Jesus healed and never came back to him again. And, and I don't know why, but sometimes people do that. They just, the power of God's right in front of them. I don't believe. Like, really? Uh, I need a sign in the sky. You just got healed. They, the truth is they just don't want to change. That's what the power of God also does is change. But... I'm actually getting into another message for now. I've left my notes a long time ago, so so um, I should probably stop it here. Ooh, half an hour. When I was preaching, I could barely do 15 minutes without reading my notes word for word, and I mean, I did still reference them, but I left my notes about 10 minutes ago. So, power of God working in our lives. So, can't talk about prayer and not pray for you. So. I will pray for you. Oh God, we just thank you and we praise you. And I pray that anybody that made it this far to the video, and even if they didn't, Lord God, I pray you would bless their life, that they will feel your presence, they will know you, and they will acknowledge you in complete and full surrender, that we, may, we all may be in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen. I hope you made it this far, but if you didn't, thank you anyway. Bye.